Hi, welcome to the course Azure Data Engineer. So now in this lecture, by using Azure Data Factory, how to fetch the uh, all files which are exist in a container in the blob stories. Now after that, how to take a particular uh, file name into a variable. So what we are trying to do is, so first of all, for example, in the blob stories, so in the blob stories, uh, assume that we have a set of containers. Okay. So we have container one and then container two. So whatever the container, container one, container two. So in this, I'm going to have a list of files. Now by using ADF, what we would like to do is, okay, by, by using this ADF, all these names, file names we want to fetch. File names we want to fetch actually. So you are going to have that list in your ADF. Then after that, any particular file name, how you are going to take into a variable, how you will get that. So on top of this, we will see one real time scenario. So that's what for this, you must understand the JSON structure, which I explained uh, in one of the video. Okay. So now let us try to do the same thing with the area. So if you see practically, uh, if you go to the blob storage first, okay. So in this, so if you observe the blob storage here, we are going to have a two containers, source files container, destination files container. When you go to the source files container, if you observe, these are the five files we have. So we want to fetch these file names into the ADF actually. Then one of the file name I want to take into a variable. So this is what overall I want to do. So for that, so now go to the ADF. So take a new data pipeline. So go to the new pipeline. Then here, how you can fetch the, how you can fetch the file names. So that's what under general category, you have a activity called get metadata activity. So by using this activity, you can fetch the metadata of a container of a file, whatever you want. Okay. So that's what go to the settings. So in the settings, uh, in the settings, you need to create a, uh, you need to create a um, data set which is pointing to this particular container actually. So first of all, we need to create that. So take a new on the fly, we will create. So it's a blob storage, data store type is blob. So, and then continue. So let us select any one of them, so they select a CSV and then continue. Then give the file uh, data set name. So DS underscore source files, data set for the source files. Uh, for dynamic fetching okay so some some relevant name i'm just giving dynamic now linked service which is already pointing to blob storage we created yeah on the fly also you can create so because we already created i took that now you reach it up to this blob okay this blob not uh, even the container up to this blob you reached by using this linked service now you just select the file path that's what you see because you reached already up to this particular container it is able to show you these two containers names up to this blob storage we already reached because of using the linked service now within that linked service within that blob these are the containers select the source file which from where you want to fetch the file names that's what so done, we fetch, uh, we reached up to the container now. So let it be, click OK. So it is also done. Now, what we want to do? Suppose, let us see the debug option. So what it is showing? Yeah, correct. So in the get metadata activity, you must tell that, okay, you reached up to the source file container, but what you want actually. So that's what's in the field list. You can mention that what you want from that particular content. We need the child items. So, so child items meaning is what the files which are there on the, under that particular folder, it is going to return action. So that's what it is going to show you. That may be again a folders if it is a data lake uh, or file, whatever that. So with this, validate, then click on debug. So no errors, click on debug. 
So now let us see, it is going to return all the file names. So you can see the output. So you see child items, under child items, you see it is returning name and it's a type, name and it's type. So how many files are there, all of them. So here, JSON structure, if you observe, child items is actually a uh, array type. Okay, that's what very important observation we have to do. So now, for example, I want to get this particular file name into a variable. So first of all, I need to declare a variable. So declare a variable, take here file name. Okay, then string. So default, we are not giving anything because we are going to get from here. Then, now this activities output, first file name, I want to have into a variable actually. So whatever variable we created here. So for that, we are going to have an activity called set variable, drag that into the canvas. After completion of fetching the file names, only you have to perform this. That means, so give this connection. On successful, so you can see on success, go to this activity. So this is doing what actually setting the file name. Now go inside, go to the settings. What for what variable you are assigning a value file name variable and what you are assigning. So go here before that observe the structure of a output. Child names in the child names. So let me take this thing into a notepad actually so that we can easily understand. So take a notepad. Let me copy this and share also. So now you can see here. So now come to the set file name activity. Here go to the dynamic content. Now in this, first of all, this activities output you are uh, taking actually. So you can see under activities output, there are five categories are there. Under activities output, you can see get metadata output part. So click on that. Now output means up to where you came is, you came up to here actually. Now within that, this we need means, first of all, you have to use this particular field. So child items we need. So that's what output dot child items. So that meaning is you reach it up to this array. That's what very important. Now within this array, which particular object uh, value you need? So you see, this is going to become index zero object. Okay. And then this is going to become uh, index. Sorry, this is zero object. Okay. And this is going to become index one object, second one. So this one, index one. And this is going to become index 2. So like that it's going to become. Now I need whoever is there in the 0th index object, my value is there actually. So here because child items is a array type, you must use the square brackets and which index 0. With this what happened actually, you reached up to 0th index object. Now within that, I need this value means its corresponding field name is name. So use that dot name. So that's all within that with that you are able to reach up to here. Let us observe that if you click OK and then if you run is this variable is going to have the value details dot CSV or not. So click on debug. Observe the output. So let us refresh, see both of them done. You can see the first one. So first one is all file names fetched from the blob storage. And then second one, if you observe output details.cs. Not only the zeroth index, okay. For example, I need the second index objects name. So replace the uh, index number zero with the two actually. So that's what, so you can go to the 
formula and then instead of zero, you can replace that with two. So click OK. Now click debug. So yes, both of them done. You can see zero uh, second index uh, file name. So that means HR analytics dot CSV. So let us cross check that by for this output actually. So you can see zeroth index, first index, and then second index. That's what HR analytics. So in this way, previous uh, activities output, you can reuse wherever required in the subsequent activities actually. So this is what in general we are going to do. In this case, just to make you understand clearly, I took a set variable activity, but in a wherever you want this out, the previous activities output, you can use actually wherever you want, you can use it simply. Okay. In the subsequent activities, especially. Okay. Thank you very much for watching. Hope this makes you better understanding of this uh, uh, combining the activities and uh, using their outputs.